Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to this short lecture on the basics of the ECG. The ECG picks up the electrical activity of the heart via a series of electrodes placed on the limbs and chest. The impulses from the heart are then turned into an electrical signal and recorded on the ECG in a series of tracings. And it's going to be your job to interpret these, so let's look at some basics. When there's no electrical impulse, the ECG trace remains static on what is termed the baseline. If an impulse travels towards the electrode, it will cause a positive or upward deflection. If it is travelling away from an electrode, it will cause a negative or downward deflection. If the electrode is at an angle to the impulse, it will cause both a positive and negative deflection as the impulse moves first towards the electrode and then away from it. ECG paper has lots of small squares on it, each one one millimeter square, and they're grouped together to make larger squares of five millimeters. A standard ECG should run at 25 millimeters per second, which means that each small square represents 0.04 of a second, and each large square 0.2 of a second. This is important when it comes to analyzing our ECG. Although the ECG is referred to as a 12 lead ECG, it only has 10 physical leads to connect to the patient. There are four physical limb leads which look at the heart in the vertical plane from six different directions. Three limb leads look from the right arm, left arm, left foot, and the information is then combined from these leads to produce three further views. Leads 2, 3 and AVF look at the heart from underneath or inferior plane. Lead 1 and AVL look from the side or lateral plane. There are six physical chest leads which look at the heart in the horizontal plane. V1 and 2 looks at the heart in the middle of the septum. V3 and 4 looks at the front or anterior plane of the heart. V5 and 6 looks at the side or the lateral plane. All of these tracings are then recorded on your ECG like this. The impulse starts in the SA node and depolarizes throughout the atria, traveling from right to left and to the AV node via intranodal tracts. The depolarization causes the atria to contract and fill the ventricles. This causes a relatively small deflection on the ECG, termed the P wave. The impulse arrives at the AV node, which hangs onto the impulse for a short period of time to allow the atria to finish contracting and the ventricles to fill. Think of the AV node as a bit like a gatekeeper. When the AV node releases the impulse, it depolarizes quickly down the left and right bundles to the Purkinje fibers, causing the ventricles to contract in an orderly fashion. The bundles in the ventricles are designed to allow quick travel of the impulse, rather like a motorway should allow fast flow of traffic. This impulse causes the much larger QRS complexes of an ECG. Because the cells have depolarized, they need to repolarize before the next impulse. Ventricular repolarization causes the T wave on an ECG. Atrial repolarization is hidden by the much larger QRS complexes. Upward deflections on the ECG are termed R waves. The first downward deflection before an R wave is termed the Q wave. The first downward deflection after an R wave is termed the S wave. If there is no R wave, the downward deflection is termed the QS wave, as there is no telling if it is a Q wave or an S wave. The gap between the start of the P wave and the start of the QRS complex is known as the PR interval, and should take between 0.12 and 0.2 seconds, or 3 to 5 small squares on the ECG. Ventricular depolarization causes the QRS complex, and should take no longer than 0.12 of a second, or 3 small squares on an ECG. It's harder to define a normal for the QT interval, which is measured from the beginning of the Q wave to the end of the T wave, as it varies inversely with the heart rate. Roughly speaking, at 60 beats per minute, the interval should be between 0.35 and 0.46 seconds, but it's far more complicated than that. So there you have it, a basic overview of the ECG in under five minutes. In the next lesson, we'll look at interpreting those squiggly lines.